All right. So let's talk about solar thermal electricity or concentrating solar power. This is different from other ways that we use solar power. We use solar energy for light. We use solar energy for heat. We use solar energy with photovoltaics to make electricity. This is a process to make electricity, but instead of using semiconductors like we do in photovoltaics, here we are using the thermal energy from the sun. So we're using the sun to heat up fluids uh, in order to produce electricity. Um, so it is called solar thermal electricity. This is a renewable resource um, in our categorization. So this is using solar uh, power. And so our use of solar power does not diminish its ability to be used in the future. Um, so therefore it is in our renewable category. So I'm gonna talk about uh, solar thermal electricity and concentrating solar power, um, big picture where, where things are in the, in the world, what types of systems there are and how they work what some of the environmental impacts are, and then a little bit about trends and outlook going forward. Um, so you can see this is a very, um, very cool, very old um, conceptual picture of, of solar thermal uh, being, being used um, in this picture. Um, and you can see the, the idea is the sun is concentrating on a fluid on these lines. And so we'll talk about the difference between line concentrating and point concentration concentrating, but the idea is to concentrating up that solar energy onto a fluid and heating it to very high temperatures. So I will, I will primarily use the term CSP or concentrating solar power, but this, this technology has several terms, solar thermal electricity, solar thermal power. CSP can sometimes be confusing because sometimes uh, concentrating Photovoltaics use the term CSP, but most of the time people are going to, when they're talking about CSP, they're talking about this, this solar thermal uh, power or solar thermal electricity production. So what does this look like on a, a big picture global scale? Solar thermal power is a very, very, very small portion of the, the amount of power we're getting from solar energy today. Um, and it is, it's not growing very much either. So if we were, Thinking conceptually about the uh, significance of CSP, and we wanted to put it in terms of fruit, um, photovoltaics are your watermelon, and CSP are, is a pea. Um, so a very small portion of our, our solar power today. So to put that just get graph graphically in perspective, over here, I'm showing you the global electricity production. Renewable energy share is in this corner, and CSP is kind of lumped together with geothermal and ocean power because it is not a very big portion of renewable electricity compared to things like solar power, uh, solar PV. And a, just another version of showing you that solar thermal power is very small. Um, here it's showing global capacity that's in operation, both uh, the capacity and the energy supplied by different resources. And so you can see here's th solar thermal heat where heat is being used directly. Here's photovoltaic. So um, solar producing electricity through vo photovoltaics. And here is solar thermal power. So very, very small. Um, and very slow growth, and we'll talk about why. So where is that capacity globally? Most of the CSP capacity is in the US and Spain. Those are the two main markets. But what you might notice from this graph showing the capacity globally is that those markets have stagnated. Um, both the US and Spain haven't really added any CSP um, power plants since about 2015. And so although those, that's where most of the capacity is, is definitely not where the growth is taking place. The growth is taking place in other countries around the world. Um, in 2019, those countries included Israel, China, South Africa, and Kuwait. Um, and France also added um, some new capacity in 2019. So that's, the growth is taking place in other, in other parts of the world. To put this growth in perspective and this capacity in perspective, um, I'm just showing you again, here is our capacity in gigawatts of, of CSP compared to our photovoltaic um, gigawatts. So again, very uh, small capacity worldwide. Um, most of that capacity that is growing 
includes what's called thermal energy storage. So one of the values that concentrating solar power has over a system like photovoltaics is this uh, thermal energy storage, which can be part of the system. And so what that allows the CSP plant to do is to continue to operate after the sun has gone down because you have this thermal energy storage. And how long it operates after the sun goes down depends on how much thermal energy storage is added and a little bit about how you're running your plant, whether you're focusing on storing the energy or producing the power right then. So that is an advantage. And so pretty much all of the, the new capacity is adding um, solar thermal uh, energy storage to extend the plant's operations into the evenings. And so this is just showing you the, the CSP thermal energy storage, global capacity is in the yellow, and then the additions for that year are in the orange. And so you can see we've, we're around 21 gigawatt hours of solar thermal energy storage at our CSP plants. Bringing it to US, which is one of the two biggest um, markets or places that have capacity of CSP, um, showing you that for, a while, um, CSP was the only way we were producing electricity, and it was certainly larger than photovoltaics until about 2010, when photovoltaics just started to take off um, because they became more cost competitive than the concentrating solar power. Um, and so you can see PVs have just taken off and CSP has grown very slowly and remains a very small portion of the uh, electricity generation in the US. So how does concentrating solar power work? It's very similar to um, our fossil fuel power plants or other thermal power plants. You are using a heat source to create steam, to turn a steam turbine, to turn a generator and, and produce electricity. So it is a thermal cycle power plant and comes with all of the shortcomings of a, a steam cycle thermal power plant. The main shortcoming that, um, is important for today's markets is that steam cycle power plants are slow to ramp up. Um, and so it's slow to turn on and can't load follow. So with a thermal power plant, you really want to get it up to a full capacity and keep it running steadily. Um, it doesn't go, the, the output does not vary very easily um, because you have this thermal load and you have to slowly warm up your, your metal pieces and your equipment in order to not damage them. Um, so that is a disadvantage for CSP that our other thermal power plants are also seeing is this inability to load follow. But it works much in the same way as our other thermal power plants, just instead of using coal or natural gas to create steam here, you're concentrating up solar energy to create the steam. An additional challenge that CSP power plants see that's a little different than our other thermal power plants is that our best solar resources are in, tend to be in the desert, especially when you're talking about solar thermal and you're talking about heat. Um, and so having cooling water in the desert, water is often scarce. So cooling water is a challenge in the desert, um, which leads several of our CSP power plants to be air cooled rather than water cooled. Um, and so that's possible, you can do that, but it reduces the efficiency of your power plant. Your thermal power plant is gonna have the most efficiency when you have a big difference between your hot temperature and your cooling tower, your cold temperature. Um, so that, that's what drives your heat engine. And the closer the in temperature those are to, to each other, the less efficient your plant is gonna operate. And dry cooling is not very effective way of cooling especially in a hot desert. Um, so you see a drop in efficiency when you're using dry cooling for our concentrating solar power plants. There are four main types of concentrating solar power. Um, and so here are the, the four types. Um, the market is dominated by two of them. So let's, let's talk about how I've kind of divided up these, these four types. So two of them use what I would call a point focus, which means that they're concentrating the solar energy on a single point. So you're using a dish shape to concentrate any solar energy with mirrors onto a single point. The other way you can concentrate your solar power is on a line focus. So in that case, you're using a parabolic shape. So um, a, a curved shape that, that those mirrors and the sun reflecting off of it is going into a line focus 
um, and, and focusing the, the solar energy on a, a single line in the middle of that, in that um, parabola. So that's two different ways to divide these up. The other way to think about it is continuous versus segmented. Segmented. So continuous just means that these are curved mirrors. And you can see it very clearly in the, in the trough system. They're actually curved mirrors where segmented mirrors are flat mirrors and you just have a bunch of them to mimic a curved surface. Um, the advantage of these flat surfaces is usually easier to make mirrors that are flat versus curved. Um, but it's not such a disadvantage um, that the, the trough system isn't dominating the, the capacity. So troughs are actually the most capacity. They are one of the um, areas where there's the most growth in concentrating solar power. Um, the power towers, the single point focus with the mirrors around it, the flat mirrors that, that mimic kind of the dish shape. Um, this is the second largest capacity, but you can see it, it very much is um, a long second from trough systems. Only um, almost 20% of world uh, capacity is these power towers, um, even though you do get to have the, the flat mirrors, um, the trough system still dominates um, in terms of efficiency and, and installation. The efficiency of these systems, if you're converting 10 to 30% of the sunlight into electricity, um, this compares just to um, solar PV, which is around 20% efficient. So kind of a similar efficiency as you see with your, your PV systems. So let's dive into the technology of these, these different systems a little bit more. So first on the, the solar parabolic trough system, um, you have your curved trough of mirrors. The sun is going to bounce off of this and, and heat up a fluid that is in a tube that is on that centered in that, in that parabola. You set these parabolas up on a north-south axis and they are a single axis, which means that they are going to follow the sun from sunrise to sunset, um, but only move on that, that single axis. So that concentrates up this fluid, um, sometimes it's oil, sometimes it's other fluids in here, something that's gonna get really hot with the, the sun um, shining on it. Hot enough where you can put it through a system that will create steam when it's cross exchanged with water, that steam will then drive your turbine and produce your electricity. The longest operating solar thermal system to date is one of these types of trough systems. This is in the California desert. Um, it was in, constructed in the mid 1980s and is still operating um, and is still the largest um, operating plant of, of CSP at over 350 megawatts. This system um, is hybrid with natural gas and you'll see that with several of the concentrating solar power systems. Um, if you think about it, if you've spent the money and installed a steam cycle power plant, you wanna utilize that capacity, that capital more than just when the sun is shining or even more than just when the sun is shining plus your thermal energy storage. And so a lot of times you will see that these CSP power plants um, also can operate on natural gas and that will keep that plant operating it, um, even after the sun has gone down. Um, so that obviously has impacts on the greenhouse gas emissions from these power plants, um, but you'll see that, that often done to help with costs and economics of these power plants. The other thing I just wanted to point out while we're here is how big these para parabolic systems are. So here's a person standing there and you can see how big these uh, parabolic mirrors are for these, these thermal systems. So the second most popular type of CSP is the solar thermal um, power towers. Um, so this is like a central receiver. Um, and so you have your, your power tower in the middle and then you have the mirrors, which are called heliostats all around it, like I said, mimicking that dish shape. And these heliostats can operate on a two axis system, which means they not only can follow the sun as it goes in sunrise and sunsets, but they can 
follow the sun when it changes altitude in the, in the sky from winter to summer um, seasonally. Um, and so that allows them to capture more of the, the sun's energy in, in all of the seasons, summer and winter, because it has that two axis um, operation. It also makes operation of those mirrors more complicated, um, more mechanically um, challenging. So there's usually more um, maintenance that needs to be done with all of these different heliostat mirrors, each of them operating on two axes. So those heliostats are concentrating the solar, um, the sunlight up into our, our power tower, into the receiver, and heating up usually salt. So in these systems, molten salt is usually the fluid that is chosen to um, heat up from that, the sun's energy. And you can see it gets very bright up there as it's heating up the, the salt and making a molten salt. That molten salt goes into your hot salt storage tank. So there's your thermal energy storage. You use that to create steam through a cross exchanger and run your, your turbine um, and produce your electricity. Um, and then you also have this, this solar thermal um, storage where you can continue to operate your, your plant after the sun has gone down. What does it look like? Here is one picture of um, Crescent Dunes Tower in Nevada, which began its operations in 2016, had 10 hours of storage. So this is just a nighttime picture. You can see it's still operating after the sun has gone down. The Ivanpah one, which is the one that's behind me, I wanted to show you a little bit more about that because it is the, the, lar the largest power tower system um, currently operating is Ivanpah solar electric generating system. And this is just a map of where it is. So here's the I-15 going from um, LA to Las Vegas. So Las Vegas is, is up here north of here. There are also several solar PV um, farms right near Ivanpah, which has these three power towers um, because it, it is in the desert. It has a very good um, solar resource in that area. So myself and Kirsten, we visited the Ivanpah solar generation, generating system. So this is when we were coming up over the hill and you can see the three power towers and their, their mirrors um, shining in the sunlight. Wanted to give you a sense of scale again and how big these mirrors are. So they were taller than we are, each of those mirrors. You can see that when we came by, it wasn't operating. And you can tell because the, the mirrors are not focusing the sunlight onto the power tower. This, like the, the system I was talking about earlier, is also co-fired with natural gas, which has brought it under the um, some criticism in terms of, of natural gas um, systems um, because of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with how much they use the natural gas system. Um, so that is just one of those environmental impacts to balance with these CSP systems. So looking pictorially about that thermal storage, if you think about here's the, the receiver collecting solar heat. So this is when this is kind of like the sun coming up and the sun coming down. It does, there is a delay before you have enough heat to actually start up the steam cycle power plant. Um, so you have to heat up the, the salt enough that you can then get the steam power plant operating, but then you, get it up and running and operate it. And then you can keep operating it after the sun is going down. This one's only a, a little bit, but in some, some systems, five, 10 hours, um, you can continue operations depending on how much thermal storage you have. So because we have these different axes that are operating in terms of the mirrors between the towers and the troughs, you get a little bit of a different profile of electricity production seasonally and daily from these different types of systems. And that's because those in that power tower, your heliostat has two axes, so it can really adjust for the change in elevation of the sun seasonally, whereas the troughs cannot. The troughs are just um, operating on a single axis and going from sunrise to sunset. And so you can see the, the power towers are going to give a more steady electricity um, output uh, because the heliostats can adjust, whereas the trough systems are definitely going to see more production in the summer and less production in the winter. And you can see in the winter, you even get a dip in the middle of the day 
with the trough systems um, because of the angle of the sun as it's going through the through the sky. All right, so the th a third type of system are these dish systems. Um, these are very much uh, not installed commercially. They are, they're more at the research stage. I would say that there's not a whole lot going on in these, these dish type systems. One is they don't have the integrated uh, solar thermal um, storage like, our, like the other systems. And so that's already a disadvantage for these. So despite them being very efficient in terms of converting solar energy to electricity using little Stirling engines, um, they are expensive. And you can see how big they are. Here's a car showing you how big they are. They're expensive and so not cost competitive on the market. All right, so that's how the technologies work. And that's some of the aspects to think about in CSP. Let's think about the uh, environmental impacts from CSP. First, good news is that there's no direct air emissions unless you're using natural gas um, uh, to co-fire with. So that is a, a big advantage of CSP, but um, it's, you know, a similar advantage as other renewable resources, right? Wind, hydro, solar also all um, are, no to no uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Water can be a significant issue um, for these plants, not just for the cooling, but also when you're thinking about, um, you know, it, uh, water in your in your steam cycle system. Now you shouldn't lose much of that water in the in the steam system, um, so that shouldn't be a, a big consumption of water. But certainly cooling is a big deal, and so it's this trade off between lot of water losses and having a um, cooling system with water versus dry cooling, which, which lowers your efficiency. Other environmental impacts from solar thermal electric include things like land use. Um, I, I'm giving some numbers here in terms of five to 15 acres per, per megawatt. It depends a little bit on which type of system that you're using. This is not all that different from PV. So from a land use standpoint, you're getting similar-ish numbers um, per megawatt um, in terms of, of land use. Another challenge that we see for um, CSP systems is the is wildlife impacts. Um, Ivanpah has had a, had a really a tough time with endangered desert tortoises that don't like to be relocated. And if that's their home, they're gonna keep kind of trying to come in. So they've done a lot to try to figure out how to accommodate the, the tortoises that uh, live in that area where, where Ivanpah is located. The other kind of more dramatic environmental impact is what are called streamers, which is light attracts bugs and bugs attract birds. And so birds that fly through um, that sunlight that's being concentrated onto the, the power tower and these single point systems um, actually catch on fire and, and die. And so you can see an estimated 6,000 birds a year are being killed at Ivanpah. This is a picture of some of those um, birds that have basically burned up in that, in that light. So it is, it's, a, it's a very... Um, hot intensive light that's that's going to that power tower and so it has those environmental impacts the reason csp is not a very big portion of our renewable energy today and is not expected to grow a lot is because it's not cost competitive so this is showing the levelized cost of energy comparison for the us on an unsubsidized manner and you can see Solar thermal towers with storage just can't compete with, with other energy resources. So despite it's some of its advantages, having the solar thermal storage, uh, low environmental impact, um, it, there are just other options that, are, that make more sense and that are more economic and that went out on the market. So in conclusion, just to give you a summary of concentrating solar power and what I hope you take away from uh, this video, it's a very small portion of electricity production. It's a P. Slow growth because it's just not cost competitive. The two countries with the most capacity are Spain and the US, but that's not where growth is taking place. The two main types are troughs and towers, very much dominated by the trough systems. Um, this 2019 was the first time that they had equal growth. 
and both trough and towers, but um, towers is, is a much smaller portion of the overall capacity. Thermal storage is usually what people talk about as being an advantage for CSP, but it does it it still struggles to compete on, on the market. And the overall environmental impacts are fairly low, but we've talked about some of the concerns of co-firing it with natural gas, you get greenhouse gas emissions, the land use and the, um, the wildlife impacts like with desert tortoises and, and birds. So that's it for concentrating solar power. Um, and hopefully um, you got a lot out of this video. Thanks for your attention.